doing how is everybody doing i hope we're all still maintaining that social distancing and staying safe and using sanitizer and wearing the mask still because this corona is still out there i hope the children are doing great going back to school i can only pray that they are kept safe and protected and is the only almighty god that will guide our children as they are in school with this whole pandemic going on called coronavirus well welcome back to the real blessing chuku show i am blessing chuku today we are going to be discussing a very un unreally discussed topic widows of africa and their brother-in-laws so don't forget to follow me on my youtube channel real blessing chuku show while you're there subscribe if you have not already subscribed turn on your notification bell so that you can get our all new uploads every week follow me on facebook instagram twitter comment like and share us also, send us an email in case you have a question regarding any topic that we've already discussed on blessingchuku678 at gmail.com. So welcome back to the real Blessing Chuku Show. Remember, at the Bless Chuku Show, we talk about religion. We talk about family. We talk about social life. We talk about empowering women especially the girl child. We talk about supporting the widows and the less privileged. Why do we talk about religion in everything that we do? We talk about religion because we let us know what God's plan for us in this 21st century. So it is so key that we add religion to what we do. So, and especially on Sundays where I have my time to connect. On time to connect, we go in depth into the word of God. Every Sunday at 10 a.m. Join us every Sunday on time to connect with me, Blessing Chuku, at 10 a.m. on YouTube Live and Facebook Live. Thank you all and welcome back to another episode of the Blessed Chuku Show, the real Blessing Chuku Show. So today I am looking at the way widows are being treated in Africa by their brother-in-laws. When a man dies, the brothers think that they will take over the woman property and even take over her life. They want to control this woman and her children. They will take every property, everything, name it, from land to houses to money to whatever it is. They will take it all over. And they will leave these women with nothing. And their children. Let's say they were living in the city. They will make them to come back to the village, to live in the village. Because they have stripped them off of everything that they have. And when they come to the village, maybe if the older brother of the husband is still alive, will say, now I own you. You need to marry me. Most of these women refuse this. But they will not stop torturing them until they say yes to that or they will strip them off of their landed property they will strip them off of their houses and strip them off of everything especially when these women are still young and their children are very young even the older women they do that to them the brother-in-law strip them of everything that belongs to their husband and they keep them in their own possession. 
for themselves and their own children and their own wives. And what they will say, okay, it's either you marry me and I will give you, you will enjoy your life. Because I'm supposed to possess you. As if a woman is a piece of furniture or a piece of property that needs to be possessed. And they will take over everything. Leaving these women with nothing to feed their children. And most cases, these women have three, four, five kids. They have no way of catering for their children. And when they do try to fight it, most of them get killed. Or they will begin to kill their children, especially their male children. They take over. Why are they killing the male children? Because in Africa, it's believed that the male child will succeed the father. And he will own everything that belongs to the father. So what do they do? They kill them off. So that they can possess everything for their children. Forgetting that their day of death is coming. And somebody could very well do the same thing to their wives and their children. But this is an ill treatment that is going on in Africa today. Even in this 21st century. Even today as we speak, you think that has been abolished years ago. And sometimes I wonder what the, ru the, the, the rural rate, um, the, 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 like the chiefs and the, and the rural leaders are doing to help this. And when you go to them to complain, whether the king of the land or the, the chief of the land, they will say, well, that is cultural. It is cultural. For your stuff to be possessed by your husband's brother or you marry him so that he can take care of you because it is his responsibility to take care of you. How can you marry your brother, your husband's brother if you don't want to? Few people like to do that, not because they like it. They do it because there is nothing else they can do. And those who would not do it, they would torment them till that woman dies or they themselves torment and dies. They keep tormenting these women. And even when these women agree to marry them, guess what? Their, their wives, the, the, brother, the husband's brother's wife will begin to fight them and call them name and tell them that they took over their husband. Of course, you have two women in the house. Everybody have their own, own story to tell. Everybody is fighting. Everybody is arguing. Everybody is into it. You know, most of the time, those men die off so quick. Because they have brought two women that, that have different views and different understanding and looking for attention that needs attention too. Because if you marry me, you have to give me attention too. Even though I was your brother's wife, you have to give me attention. And then they begin to struggle over the man. They begin to struggle over property, over food, over everything. And then they are, they, they, women too, they begin to hate each other and begin to fight and begin to go to native doctors and begin to kill each other. And their children. These are the things that the brother-in-laws are causing. It is their fault that these things are happening. It is so wrong. And one thing I know is that it's because of uneducation. Is why all these things are happening. Because most of those women are not educated. Or they don't understand. Even if they do understand, it is cultural. What is cultural to take over a woman's property that her husband left her and her children? And the children are too young to fight and they, they're too young to even take over anything. But even when they have older children, the uncle would try to find a way to eliminate them or get rid of them from fighting for what rightfully belongs to their father. And most of the cases, you know, we women, we don't want to lose our children. And they will say, please, let them have everything. Is that right? Let them have anything so that everything, so you can leave. So it's between, you have to choose between your children putting food on the table. It becomes a chaos. It becomes a problem. So this is what is going on in Africa. Till today, 
I'm appalled that we still have things like this happening. These women talk about educating the girl child. She needs to know that she cannot be subject to things like this. She needs to understand that this is not good. It is time to get an education. It is time for us to empower women, especially the God child, and let them know their God-given potential. That men cannot just subdue you and put you under where they want to put you because you're a woman. A lot of these children are uneducated. They live in the village, even if they live in the city. No money to go to school, no money to do anything. No matter whatever they do, that there's no way to a means of anything. And their, per their mother will work so hard trying to sell different things to make sure that these children have food on their table. And what does this cause? This causes these children to, you know, to start um, going in the wrong d directions. Drugs, alcohol on the street, sexual immorality, just to be able to eat and to put food on the table. Most of these children, they go, by the time they are 15, they are into prostitution, the girls, to bring food to the table and so that the male child can go to school. This is dehumanizing. This is inhuman on women of Africa. This is so wrong that something like this should still be happening. And I think as though that the women need to be educated. They need to know what their right is. They need to know that their husband's property belongs to them, whether children or no children, whether brother-in-law or no brother-in-law, whether sister, sometimes even sister-in-laws do this and they go through the same thing in their husband's house, but they come here still and fight their brother's wife because that is what is happening to them. Does that make it right? It is not right that is happening to you. It is not right that is happening to a fellow woman. This is ongoing. When a man dies, it becomes a problem for a woman. You know, sometimes, even when the man dies, they accuse the woman of killing her husband. Sometimes they will wash the husband's body and give the woman to drink to prove that he, she has no hand in the killing of her husband. A woman's hair is scraped off. Most of the time, they are allowed to go to work in the dark, in the midnight, like 12 midnight, they will walk from their house to the nearest stream. And there will be like maybe two other women following her. One would be like about one mile in front, the other one one mile in the back. And this woman is walking alone. A woman that just has lost her husband. They do all kinds of fetish things to make them prove that they did not kill their husband. Especially those brother-in-laws who want to possess everything. And guess what? When they go to the chiefs and the, and, the, and the rulers of the land, they say, well, if you didn't kill your husband, you have to go to our deity and swear to the deity that you didn't kill your husband. And these women, to prove that they didn't, they will go and swear. Sometimes they know that they, are, they didn't do anything because the brother-in-law already know that they didn't do that. They will make them swear to the deity and they will plan with the deity uh, or um, the eyes of the gods, they call it, to kill the woman, to prove that she did it. By the time they know this woman is not, is not even a part of this, She's already dead and her children have suffered for years in their life. And then therefore going into different things that they need to do to survive. Whether good or bad, whatever put food on the table. It is absolutely wrong. It is time women of Africa arise and we do something concerning these widows of Africa. Anywhere you have them, anywhere you see them, try to encourage them, try to encourage them to be educated, try to show them what they can do, how they can live their life with their children and how they will know that this is their right and not anybody's right to do this to them. Well, today, I hope this is opening our ears and our eyes to know what is really going on with African widows and their brother-in-laws and the rest of the family of the man 
what they do to these women. Join me as we go back into this topic. This is just a little synopsis for us to kind of have an idea of what we're going to be talking about on the second part of this very topic. Join me. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Real Blessing Chuku Show. Leave us a message or a comment or suggestion that will help us to build this case or this topic at blessingchuku678 at gmail.com. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, in Twitter. Comment, share, and like us. And also, join me every Sunday as I go in-depth into the Word of God and bring to us what God is saying about family and our relationship with Him in this 21st century. Thank you for always watching. Thank you for my subscribers. Thank you for each and every one of you that like us and share us and comment and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and everywhere. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. I celebrate you all. You all make this show go viral. Thank you so much. I am Blessing Chuku for real Blessing Chuku show. And on Sunday, on time to connect with me as we go in depth into the word of God. Take care of yourself and each other. Bless you and stay connected. And follow us as we go into the deep topic of these widows and their brother-in-laws in Africa. Thank you and bye-bye. Love you all. Stay connected.